Oh, welcome to Heaven's Ward all or all dungeons. And funnily enough, our first dungeon is an optional dungeon. It's not even the first story dungeon of Heaven's Ward. Oops. Uh, reset start. There we go. Welcome to Kurthus, a land encased in eternal winter, thanks to uh, our big buddy Bahamut there that we just wiped the floor with. I mean, he is our big buddy, especially when I'm on Summoner, you can just summon him at will. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And good guy, good guy Bahamut. Fix us your games! Let's just not I get sloppy! Not. Mm -hmm. Surprise. <laughs> Would you rather sickness be, be purged? I mean, if I don't see either in ch if I don't find out either or used in chat, I will be very sad. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. So, a lot of the dungeons are going to be us splitting up the tasks between who grabs keys when they spawn and kiting enemies all the way to basically we're pulling wall to wall is what it's called yeah unless uh dungeons have forced walls between bosses like this one does and there are times where i'm just here for moral support and key duty yeah or in that case lever duty Close enough. This boss is a bully. He will just uh, stun lock you repeatedly. Like he just did me. Yeah. Uh, fighting this dungeon solo, you will get into like a string of five stun locks. <laughs> and there is nothing you can do about it except just scream in agony. Uh, because yeah. as Black Mage, you have a 15 second timer that you have to try and keep up otherwise like all your big spells just go away and if you get stunned there's nothing you can do yeah time for another quick donation yes yeah. cool there's another ten dollar donation from sspx that just says also i love the music is it a final fantasy game if it has bad music i mean let's be honest here Soken has really knocked it out of the park uh, with the music in this game. I feel real bad because my uh, mom's got a broken clavicle right now. She just gave me a call. I'm like, I had to send the roommate. <laughs> Yeah, this this is kind of a force. Twiddle your Yeah. Auto scroller in I... the MMO. Ah, I was in the middle of casting and you interrupted my cast. That is so unfortunate. Just for that you can pick up the key. So Final Fantasy Fourteen has an interesting history as a game. Um, it is not the first MMO, Final Fantasy. Uh, that that honor goes to Eleven, which I have played a little bit of. It is a, a much different game. It is. Um, um, I personally have not gotten to play it, um, and I'm not sure I would enjoy it just from how drastically different it plays from it 14. Plays closer to how 1.0 played, to be entirely honest. Exactly. The original iteration of Final Fantasy XIV Online, or 1.0 as it's called, was so bad, it almost ended any future for another MMO Final Fantasy. It, it was it was that bad. Final Fantasy games are always expected to be on the complete 
you know, they're supposed to be leading the curve in terms of visuals, visual style. Oh, yeah. And for an MMO for PCs and the PlayStation 3, it didn't have enough. If it was a single player game, it would have been fine. However, it didn't have enough grunt so, to have all of those graphical advancements. So the original um, MMO, or the original 1.0, was done on the Crystalis engine, which is the same engine that um, Final Fantasy XIII was done in. And, of course, those, ga those games are visually uh, beautiful, but they, um, to make the MMO, they just kind of overloaded all the art assets, like the Shroud, you would, the Black Shroud, which is the forested area in the game. Um, the whole game was, ba the whole Shroud was a maze of the same tree, because they literally used the same tree asset over and over. Um, and it would, ca it would cause people to get lost in there. There was a lot of just like stuttering and lag too, because Chrysalis wasn't meant for MMOs, it was only meant for single player games. Yeah, um, and there were also gameplay issues as a whole. You had a different stat called Anima, and if you wanted to teleport, you had to use Anima instead of Gil or Gold or what have you in just about every other MMO and other abilities you use Anima too. The problem with Anima is it took hours to replenish. Not seconds or yeah. minutes or whatever. Uh, it took hours to replenish. You could lose several levels if you died. Um, that was a mechanic brought over from 11. From 11. Yep. Um, there would be enemies that are extremely overleveled uh, in between like low level areas. So players were constantly just getting nuked to again. Uh, just trying to make their way, way through and losing levels and getting set back and farming levels. Uh, trying to get XP took an obscene amount of time. You could spend over 24 hours grinding and still not get a level up. That, and that, we're just talking low level stuff, trying to get low levels. Yeah. It was bad. Whereas in the much more readjusted version one. of the 14 now um you can make the early game uh, go by really quick of how they compress the leveling and everything in that area so those uh drake spurs this is the first kind of like instance of a mechanic of where you have to kill it well in the dungeons that, that we're going to see anyway we have to kill a Tar uh, an item or a, I mean, a fixed enemy to move on. I see die. you still have some kittens following you. Yes. <laughs> gala kittens. You have a couple of gala kittens after me, but um, they will only follow me the, as far as the started line, so that's not that big a problem. Luckily, they do not follow you through like area transitions. Uh, that would just be depressing. Yeah. I mean, if this was um, Cutter's Cry, they would only uh, follow you a certain distance because that dungeon's weird. Cutter's... I don't think Cutter's no, Cry... No, it's had Cutter's... Leashed. It's, uh, Copper it's Bell, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Copper Bell. Copper Bell is the only dungeon in the entire game, and it's the third dungeon in the entire game. But it's the only one where the enemies have leash distances where they'll drop aggro on you and go back to the starting point. But they like bungee. They have this weird bungee cord kind of thing going on where they'll drop aggro, run back to their start, go, oh yeah, I'm chasing this adventurer, and I'm going to run all the way back after, never mind. Back, back and forth. Uh, and it's really weird, and I don't know if it's a bug, or if that was intentional. Uh, yeah. Just, if, if it was intentional, I could see them losing aggro, it's just that weird bungee cord effect yep. they have going on. So we were originally going to summit uh, a Realm Reborn all dungeons for, for this, event but there is one dungeon that really just kind of we decided no because of 
Uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, Stone, Stone Vigil, Vigil Hard. <laughs> because the second um, boss, unless you have a blue mage, requires you to use some fixed cannons in the, the arena to damage the boss. Blue Mage has an ability called Level 5 Death, which, as long as RNG is on your side, will kill the enemy in one hit. Because 50 is a multiple of 5. Yeah, you go from running every dungeon in like 3 minutes to Stone Vigil Hard, which is over 20 minutes. Just because of that one boss, yeah. Just because of that one bloody boss. Um, and, if all the end and you have to have a healer with you. For that if you're doing it unsynced because if all the little npc buddies die you just die there's nothing you can do it's just ha screw you uh and you're gone yeah and you gotta start again well or or throw your controller through the wall i mean that's that's definitely an option i consider that while uh doing i used to have world record in a realm reborn all dungeons and i definitely considered that while trying to figure out how to beat that boss same same i actually in the middle of the run, I left, changed a class to Paladin because Paladin has a heal. Just so I could keep hay or I could actually do enough damage and still heal those, the, the Ish Guardians, and it still didn't help. Yeah, no. Um, it took me over 30 minutes or something to get through on my first run. Because I went through it blind. I'm like, eh, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, there really aren't any guides. There really isn't a huge speedrunning scene for this game, to be honest. Um, that said, someone did like completely bop the world record I had, and I'm glad. Which means there's still some competition out there. They, yeah. They, they use Blue Mage. Uh, but I had to change fair. classes like four or five times before I finally found out that Astrologian. I could cheese by dropping big shields mm. on the knights. So they could shrug off attacks and I could yeah. just sit there and glare at the stupid cannon for an hour. Stop targeting easy, please, thank you. Yeah, this dungeon's the big lead up to me meeting the BBEG of Heaven's Ward story, Nidhogg. Or at least part of it, anyway. You don't actually meet him in here, but... This is you trying to find an ally to help you beat BBEG of... Uh, the, of Heaven's Word, or at least one of them. No, oh, no, we completely skipped her. Let's check. Yeah. As someone's pointing out in the chat, this is uh, Nidhogg's effectively wife. Life mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And here we go through and wipe the floor with Nidhogg himself. Yep. Kinda. Yeah, it does take a little bit. Final steps of faith, you finally do end, end the dragon, but, you know. Um... This is just such a pretty area, though. It is. And some really pretty music. It's... Final Fantasy's col color schemes that they'll come up with for these dungeons and the music that goes with them is just so well done. Right, Sprint, that is a thing. Funnily enough, I was actually wasn't trying to hit Sprint. I went to hit Umbral Soul and just backfingered it. <laughs> right. um, so, out of these dungeons that we're running now, what's your favorite? Oh, um... That's a tough one, to be honest. Heaven's Word has a lot of really mm -hmm. um, I definitely have a huge love-hate relationship with the vault. <laughs> Just because... I think it's because I had such a hard time with the final boss. Originally. Right. This Cherubur just wiped the floor with us again and again and again. <laughs> it was not very fun. 
Um, so did Mr. I Have Power, whose name I'm blanking on. Gyolo? I, I think Grimo. so. Grimo? Grimo? yeah. Uh... All of the, all, a lot of the names you'll find in Heaven's Word, at least for the Ishgardians, the elves, are all like French names. Yeah. And it's really hard to figure out what they're supposed to be pronounced going, as because not a lot of, of them are voiced. Terrain I'm going to bounce off of on the way down here. I am, uh, um, oh, I hit all three. Two. I only hit two of them. I thought I was going to clear the third and then my butt clipped it and I got stuck anyway. Maybe they'll all help clip anything. Small as they are. Right? Heaven's Word is Final Fantasy's obligatory uh, church is bad, okay? Yep. Storyline. Honestly, that's a common theme with, in Final Fantasy, too. Yep, um, it, it's just kind of obligatory, <laughs> it yeah. feels like. And then uh, if anyone's played Final Fantasy VI, um, might be familiar with something called the Warring Triad. That is a thing in um, 14 also. Yeah. Church is bad, Empire is bad. Yeah. Church bad, dragon good. Turning on dragon. It, it, it's, that's a huge, uh, that's kind of heaven's word in a nutshell though. Yeah. <laughs> So the goal with these broodlings here is, oh, never mind. When don't they die, they do a it, uh, yeah, a thing called final yip, where they just kind of let out this shockwave, and uh, you can get through it without waking up the slumbering dragons, or you can wake up the slumbering dragons and then have multiple more enemies to fight. And Kage's got skills that she needs to keep up and running because Black Mage. Um, I think we yeah, don't have that. I just have a <laughs> gauge to charge. Um, though, if I was playing a monk, I'd have Grease Lightning to deal with. And keeping that up and running. Because damage is good. <laughs> oh, Grease Lightning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I have some static map or some friends, uh, that main monk, and Grease Lightning really sucks, because it has, like, a 16-second timer. The only way to refresh it is by going through your complete 1-2-3 combo. Are you Pretty much. Uh, you can meditate, but that requires you to stand completely still. Yeah. And you don't get that until in the 70s. Yeah. That's also like you're but, revving an engine, too, which is funny. Yeah. Each stack of Grease Lightning increases your skill speed, so you go faster, you hit faster. Um, so it's integral to keep that up at all times. And the game's very unkind to you, because if you can't go through that 1-2-3 combo, you basically lose your Grease Lightning. Go back to super slow. Mm -hmm. Luckily, 5.4 here in a couple weeks fixes that completely. Yeah, it's just a permanent. Um, yeah, it's just a permanent speed boost. The center, yeah. Um. Though I will, I will say, Final Fantasy's uh, percentages sometimes are weird. Um, I've played Black Mage before, and Thundercloud is very weird. How many times it procs? <laughs> Thundercloud is completely cross, RNG skill. That. Yeah. Um, Thundercloud here is if I cast my damage over time ability, Thunder, um, every tick of damage Thunder does, it has a chance of rocking this ability called Thundercloud, which basically gives me a free insta-cast of uh, Thunder. On top of that, the Thundercloud countdown um... Basically, when you use that, that free thundercloud proc or free thundercloud cast, not only does it do the base thunder damage, it'll then stack on all of the damage over time that thunder had done up to that point in the 15 second countdown that thundercloud has. Yeah. And to answer that question in chat, um, I'm playing Samurai and Kage is playing Black Mage. I am a Black Mage main, and okay. all of my friends think I'm crazy. 
for it. Black yes. Mage hits like a truck, but it's a very slow moving truck that's made out of glass. Guys, <laughs> if you look at it funny. And does not like to move. Black glass Mage and does not paper. Like to move. Glass and paper, yeah. And here we are at Sickness Must Be Purged. The Vault, a.k.a. Hey, let's uh, let's kick you in the feels. Let's make you feel like heroes and then just nuke you. Yeah. It's this a very is the infamous dungeon. First dungeon where uh, 14 really likes to take you on the feels trip. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we really should spoil what happens. Here for anyone that wants to pick up the game. No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's anything. a great moment. Unless you're like a healer man and you're just standing there going, dude. Okay, can I? I can. Okay. I can resurrect him. Oh, never mind. I, I'm a level 60 white mage. I have benediction. That's an insta heal the fool, right? right? Oh, okay. Pot says I'm useless and I got it. Yeah. Warrior Light is only as powerful as the plot says. Yep. So sometimes you are completely and utterly useless, and other times you are just suplexing a god because you can. Mm -hmm. Kage, why are you trying to escape? He's not dead yet. Meow! Now he's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta go, bye. You okay, bye. Speedy Puppado. <laughs> so the, the running joke theory of the game is that Lollafells are, are not born, they are planted and grow. Uh, Lollafell won the bid war. Normally, I am Amy Cote, which is, it, it's a cat person. Yeah. Normally Human I'm with either, cat ears and tail. Normally, I'm either a Ara or a uh, Elizen, which is the, um, not quite a dragon race or the elf race. Though, I might give a Rogadame here a try after Fantasianing out of. Wait for these guys to get close and say hello to Fowl. Kaboom. I do love the um, music in here. It's very like classic Final Fantasy. Um, as, and it as changes I, I, with each floor you go up. Yeah, each floor it does change. As I said earlier, uh, Mayoshi Soken did the music for this one, not Umatsu. He actually did some of the music for 1.0 and they still did use his music in here in various dungeons but he kind of retired and was just on consult for this game I believe hey. if it was like health issues that caused yeah. Uematsu to step down to but Sokan has just done an incredible job mm -hmm. with it hey, hey Melos only about 5% of all the Lothels are evil the rest are just adorable. Uh, that number feels pretty low. 5% are blatantly, obviously evil. There we go. <laughs> the rest are just plotting your demise behind a smile. Or behind a helmet with a beard. Lolly ho? <laughs> Lolly ho. Yeah, Utaru, um, very weird. Um, best way to describe the Taru is they look like Lollafells, but they don't have knees. Lollafells have knees, but refuse to use them. Maybe that's why they're so evil, because they said, eh, screw evolution. Maybe. Shantoto is an evil target, yes. 
And Shantento has actually made an appearance in 14. Um, they did a crossover event between 14 and 11. And then you meet the uh, creator of the Black Mages, Shatoto. Yeah. Who's a Lalafell, but not a Lalafell. She's technically a Nimian? Hmm. I think. She's one of the first, like, Vok uh, Black Mages. Yeah. All right, can we, like, just laugh through your... Sickness must be purged. Ah, we didn't get through it. No. I think this still takes three people. Yeah, so I'll take this side. Please don't hit me with that slow ability because I really don't like that. That'd be sloppy. I don't think we're gonna hear his catchphrase. No. Nope. So, Lollafells tend to be food for a lot of just the random flora and fauna. There's a lot of the fates in this game, which are things in the world that you can go and do, or leave, leave, leave quests, which basically say, this so-and-so monster is eating Lollafells. Stop them. Yeah, it's kind of a running choke in this game. Yes. Poor Lollafells. Maybe you that's know. why they're evil. They're always getting eaten. <laughs> Could be. And as far as music goes, this is one of my favorite dungeons. For overall favorite of this era, this block, I would have to say um, I need the chemical and fractal continuum. So, top three tracks overall in the game. Um, in the game? Yeah. Okay. Um, because I, I know that's really hard. It really is. Well, Big Bridge, obviously. Just one of my favorite songs in all of 14, or all of Final Fantasy. Um,. bring all these guys up here so I can blow them up. Okay. Um, you've actually managed to stump me a little bit here. I would have to say... Uh, I mean, of course, the twinning. Which yeah, long fall is really good. Long fall, yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Imagination. I have to think of the name of it. I am drawing a blank on what one. Is that Twintania's theme? Nope. That is uh, Aether Chemical. Oh. Really? Yeah. That one is really good. And then if uh, I had to give a fourth one, uh, an Ultimus theme. <laughs> All right, what's your three or four? Hmm. Yes, we just killed a big giant book. Yes, we did. I like answers. That's one I can listen to on repeat constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I oh, you've been terrified. Or you've been hit with that thing. My feelings have been hurt. Yeah. So, it's literally what that debuff is, is the goblin yeah. or the gremlin throws insult at you. And the, the best way to get rid of that debuff is you have to use the soothing mode and comfort your buddy. Yeah. All right, anyway. <laughs> I would say answers. There's a version of answers that the name I'm blanking on right now. You're in uh, the Binding Coil raids. Mm -hmm. It's a remix of it that's really good. Um, Is it the instrumental, instrumental one? It's the instrumental one. Uh, s long spiral, I think, or something, or spiral, or something like that. Spiral sounds right. Yeah. 
Uh, that one's really good. Answers is actually a song done by Oimetsu. Yep. Um, uh, Uematsu did Answers, Dragon Song, and I think Soken did Revolutions and uh, Shadowbringers. He did do Shadowbringers. Uh, this is a boss with a force mechanic, by the way. Yep. We're going to get tethered to these orbs. We have to drag them across the, the Biblios. Um, the Biblios, if you are familiar with Five, you would recognize him from there as he's one of the other bosses in Five. Basically, we set his book on fire and he gets mad at us. Yeah. Did Uematsu did revol revolutions also? I wasn't sure. Thank you, Melos. So, that's how, how easy some of these dungeons can be. I can actually glance over at chat and answer questions yeah. or whatever. Um, cool. So, I really like Spiral. Um, it's tied, but Spiral and Answers, I'd say, are tied because they're too same song yeah um i really like um rise it has really grown on mm. me uh the final alexander fight theme that you yes. hear in the face change uh funnily enough if you actually look up the official lyrics for that it has a spot that's all question marks yeah, I remember that, yes. Um, because it's apparently one of the only songs in the game with bad language. Uh, there's a pe supposedly an F-bomb right there. They snuck in. That's great. But it's such a fast rap, you can't understand it anyway. You're, like, never going to catch it. Come on, guys. Let's get down here. They're content to stop and throw ice at me. I see that. Uh, yes, I remember when Flare was the big attack. Mm -hmm. And probably a long fall also. There's so there's so many good so much good oh, music yeah. in this game, it's really hard to pick to be honest. Yes, I would agree. Sorry. Now I do like what they did with um Gooball Library and Gooball Hard. Um, where the hard version is a much darker version of the same theme. Um, Gruta's theme is pretty good. It's used to be my like go-to song, but then Oblivion came out. <laughs> Oblivion's good. Return to Oblivion is really good, but at oh, the yes. same time, it's like... Uh, E8 Savage, uh, Lights Rampant, PTSD Flashbacks, no. <laughs> and then of course there's uh, Big Fat Tacos. Hmm. And again, you're lucky I can't kick you. Uh, Ruby <laughs> Weapons theme. Yes. It's literally the Ultima Weapons theme, just a rock version of it. Uh -huh. Same exact song. Yeah, Dancing Mad is um, in here. It's in... Part of the Omega Raids. Oh, Omega. It's Sigma Scape. It's, uh, uh, it's, one I through four. I think it's 04. Yeah. Sigma Scape 4. And this is Imagination, by the way, for those of you listening on stream. Another song I like, actually, out of the dungeons, outside of the dungeon scene music, would be Idleshire. Day really? Thing. Idle Shares Day, yes. I, uh, funnily enough, I really don't care for that. Um, an overworld theme that I love is Rakika Greatwood at night. The day theme. <laughs> I mean, the, the day theme is also incredible. Yes. But I just love the, the chill piano music that all of the Shadowbringers um, areas have at night. Another really chill song is uh, honestly the Asm Step cool. both at day and night. Yes. It's a Final Fantasy game. It's really hard to pick pick favorite songs. Right. Very fair. Like To the Edge is another great song. Mm -hmm. But I like this song mostly because it, it pulls in the um, like intro mu movie music. 
for for Heaven's Ward, but it doesn't make it the main focus. Like it's just a extra piece, and then we get the boss music that entirely, I'm entirely honest with you, I got really tired of this song. Um, yep. So these areas that we're in right now, um, there's a couple dungeons in them. They're very bright, very glowy. Um, it's, it was made by the ancient civilization in the game called the Elegans. Um, Hope you like neon. Yeah, they liked their neon lights. I mean, how else do you show they're a futuristic tech, you know? Yeah. Uh, hmm. When we get to the next, uh, next four stop, I'm going to move something around on my display here real quick just so people can see it, because I didn't realize that wasn't showing. Why'd you cover up? I'm, I'm guessing my timer's not added into the display, so I'm going to move it over on the screen real quick while we're dealing with this guy. Because that takes, like, no time, and it's already in there. <laughs> I had a spot for it. I didn't know if they were going to add a um, special crop for it, so yeah. Let's make it show up real quick. I believe our PB on this run was what, like two hours fifteen, or two hours five, something like that. Very close to that, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's been a world record set yet on this one, or. Uh, first run set because uh, funnily enough every time we try to record uh, a proper record submission run something comes up and one of us has to get up and pause the timer yeah <laughs> and it does have to be single segment I do like how they reuse this um Sprite enemy at, or that enemy sprite the lion there later on in Shadowbringers. You'd think it'd be something big and bad, but no, it's just clearly the trash. An amount. An amount, yeah. Hey, it is possible. Single statement in, in this case, it just means you're going from dungeon to dungeon. It doesn't it's not like um a regular run where you would start at the beginning of the game go all the way to the end of the game. It means you have to keep going in and out and out. While we're writing this elevator, have you got any donations? Uh, uh, yeah, I actually have uh, one. It's from Taters. It says, Hey all, let's have a virtual round of applause for the runners, organizers, and volunteers for this great event. And that was a $1 donation. I thought there was another crash. I thought there. so too. <laughs> so That's this is actually the only uh, dungeon in this entire game that doesn't have a single treasure chest. There are no loot drops in this entire dungeon. Which well, I, I don't know. I, in all honesty, I'm kind of okay with that because it was the last dungeon of the story and you probably already right had one. better gear anyway by this point. Oh, I heard what you said and didn't register it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think it's a glitched dungeon. Glitched elevators, though, I mean... They've actually seemed to have fixed that recently. Yeah, uh, we were still popping up and down. Oh, well, it's been fixed on PlayStation. Nice. Uh, I got the far right one. Okay. All right, these guys. And 
it's been given to him once a time. Okay. Now you might notice that I have like different s s chimes going on in the game. That's when like various skills are charged up or gauges are full. Um, that's one thing 14's been very good about is audio cues. Along with the visual cues, the visual cues in this game are most of the time very direct and very obvious what's going on. I think my biggest complaint one is Titan and his landslide because it's almost the exact same color as the floor. Yeah. I felt when I first started playing the game, I fell off a Titan almost every single time, literally just because I couldn't see the landslide marker. Don't mind us, just wiping the floor with a couple of bit some of the big bads. It won't defeat you again. Uh, looks like we just beat you. No, we beat. Sort of. Sort of, yeah. Well, we beat him alone. Yeah. Then they do this the diffusion dance in that cutscene there that we don't show um, because we both have cutscenes turned off, or at least I do. I do too. Um, Shadowbringers, however, does force you to watch the cutscenes. But they do the, the fusion dance, and then they make Essien Prime, and then I think I'm gonna hit you with that swing. Good. Sorry. Okay. This move, we have Essien uh, Prime here. Yeah, this move has a really cool animation, Annihilation. Yeah. So flashy. And then after this, you would go on and... Oh, uh, no, we actually didn't do that. That's in the uh, Realm Reborn run. But we can, I can actually skip them. Um, I, can, I can crash the game to desktop and then log back in, and it will load me out past the cutscene scene, and I can just keep moving in the dungeon. Unfortunately, Kage can't do that. <laughs> I can, but it takes me a lot longer. Yeah. Um... Basically, if media crashes the game, he doesn't have to go through the whole authentication token stuff phase, if I recall. No, I still have to authenticate. Oh, do you? Okay. But I don't have to wait about the... Windows doesn't care uh, compared to the PS4 going, okay, I got to validate. Occasionally, depending on how you crash it. Ah, yes, my favorite dungeon called Always Reap. It's actually called Never Reap, but it came up so much that it was like... Always Reap. Um, bless you. So the dungeons here that we're at aren't part of the main story. Uh, it is patch content, basically. Uh, filler between the next main chunk. It's an optional dungeon. You didn't have to do it um, back when it's main content. It's a good idea to do it just because it would drop gear that was better than you would have typically had at that point, and you would have gotten a currency called stones, but you need to buy even better stuff. Yep. For a second, I thought the game wasn't going to register me jumping into the tornado and was just going to let me jump to my death. <laughs> As I dropped all the way to the bottom of the island before getting launched. Nice. <laughs> Actually and this is what happens when you get in a tornado. You get thrown into the air. There are lots of bosses and mechanics that just kind of go in. Yeah. The uh, game likes to eat you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, hey. I kept interrupting my cast for some reason. Oh. And this bot is fun because it likes to cast a fog, but you can't see him through, and you have to find its ghost and kill that. Which is really unfortunate as Black Mage. Oh. 
Did we? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've never done that before. I was uh, running around looking for it. I was nope, too. Just dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Cool. We must have critted. Must have, yeah. All right. Have a stop. You got one still off, but yeah. But the barrier dropped. Yep. And these are. Really divine bees. Divine bees, yes. Uh, but they do have a, a, fun, a, a ability called Final Sting. Um, it hurts. It hurts a lot. There is a dungeon in a realm reborn called the Sunken Temple of Quorn. And it is a level 30, a level 32 dungeon. And final sting in that can, can and still will one shot a level 80 player. If you're running that dungeon unsynced. I have lost a run to that before. I had a giant pull. I thought I cleared all the bees and then all of a sudden I popped. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it took me, it took me a little while to figure out what happened. Thankfully, we can kind of ignore them because we're about to go through a zone line real quickly. No, we're not. Okay. No, oh, but I can. I, don't know. I think I've got hate on them, so get the do that, and I'll hang out here with the, the murder bees and whatnot. They're not really bees in this case; they're more akin to angry wasps. So you want to see something really cool with the camera? Ah, oh, left. Right. You were just completely denied. Yes, I was. Oh, hey, look. Oh, we got a Vandu falling. Yeah, we definitely need to kill these guys before we jump across the barrier for the final boss. Or <laughs> it's going to be really bad. Basically, the game does not let you leave the dungeon or leave an instance if you are in combat. And these guys will continue holding aggro on you. Uh, even after you beat the final boss, despite them being in an area, they can't reach you. And you then you can't leave the dungeon. Because you are technically in combat. Yeah. And it's just a sad day. Apparently, I can still run an incantation. For a spell while being submerged in water. Go figure. I mean, no. That was after this. So say the Kojin did put that little. Buff yeah, but on that us, was but well that was after, after the fact. This. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was just well oxygenated water. That was bad, even for me. Yeah, it was. Okay. Rectal Continuum. This is a really cool dungeon. Mm -hmm. You are basically uh, running through a museum. Hey, an elegant museum, museum. And everything is trying to kill you. Um, because we broke in, and apparently its security system is mm -hmm. all the displays. Just... Yep. Come to life to ruin your day. In the in the lore, the Alligans are a very uh, twisted race of people. Um, they weren't until a point. Um, they made all sorts of incredible technological advancements, and then all of a sudden they went full imperial mode. We are going to conquer the entire world, and they kind of did. Yeah. Um. The only place they didn't conquer, or they did kind of, and then didn't because they got pushed out, uh, was Mercedia, which is a another continent to the south of the one we're on, which is um. We're on Eorzea. Yeah, that's the planet. Uh, the planet name is Hydalin. That's right. Yeah, I was get those two mixed up. Uh, anyway, um. 
I'm sure you've seen that meme of the the um, plane that came back from after flying over a an ancient tribe of people with all these spears and arrows embedded in the bottom of the wings, in the bottom of the hole. Yeah, that's how the uh, Mercedians handle anybody coming near their island or their continent. And after dealing with the horrors that is Alec, I, I don't really blame them. Yeah, I don't either. See, Alec and people are actually really terrible. Um, and that plays really heavily into the lore. Like, our buddy Bahamut there, um, that we fought, uh, was a dragon captured by the Alligans and was being turned immortal and always being regenerated. Basically, we were stopping him before he fully regenerated and destroyed the world again. Because that's a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Bahamut was sealed in the moon uh, Hello there. by the Alligans. And... Sorry, I had to make the General Kenobi reference there with, with this guy. Oh. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Basically, uh, they sealed this dragon god in the moon and were using him as a power sort, a big battery to power all of their equipment. And then the Empire found it and they tried to activate it and crash Dalamud into the earth a la Majora's Mask and they unleashed Bahamut and Bahamut literally destroyed the entire world. Mm -hmm. And that's how we reset it from the disaster that was 1.0 yep. of Final Fantasy XIV because I don't think I actually finished that story. Scatterbrained <laughs> person. Sorry. If you, if you want to see how that um, all played out, go on to uh, YouTube and look up a the end of the era, end of an era trailer. And that will kind of give you the ending of 1.0 and how they transition to ARR. Um, it's actually really incredible. Mm -hmm. um, when Yoshi P, uh, Naoki Yoshida, took over the game, um, the original director was pretty much kicked off the project. Uh, Yoshida took over and completely had, the, had to rebuild the game from the ground up to what it is now, what is known as A Realm Reborn. That's why it's called that. Um, they literally wiped the slate clean. They switched engines. They completely rebuilt the game. Um, there's actually a really good documentary on YouTube on mm. the entire 1.0 and how they worked at New Realm Robot. But they had this huge event where um, players had to fight wave after wave after wave, and they were literally going around the devs like, okay, let's see, let's drop, you know, these really powerful mobs on them, and they, they surely can't beat them, and the players would just keep chewing through all of these, like, super powerful bosses and world bosses that they were dropping. So, so great. Ray, um, when they condensed all the side questing that from uh, ARR to Heaven's Ward in the latest version, Sniff the Chocoa went away. Which is unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> I'll take this side. Okay. And you'll probably still come around and kill things before I get around over to. Probably, we'll see. That's what's happened the last couple of times. Did you get the switch there then? Yeah, I'll get the switch. So, uh, the end of an era trailer that you watch is this really cool pre-rendered cinematic of Bahamut just wrecking the world. Um, the whole, all of Eorzea united to try and stop the Empire and try and stop it from dropping Dalamud and they unleashed Bahamut and hell broke loose basically. Yeah. But that is the cutscene the players saw in 1.0 of the, all of Eorzea, the entire world actually being destroyed, and then the servers shut off. That was literally the last thing all the players saw was the world literally being obliterated before the servers shut off for several months as they finished A Realm Reborn in Launch. Which is actually really, really cool if you ask me. Yeah, and um, for the early part of the game, um, 
the 1.0 players could only play on certain servers called legacy servers because they didn't want um, the 1.0 players to upset the guild pool of the new players coming in with 2.0. Um, they have since lifted that restriction. The legacy servers still exist, but anybody can go to them now. And then um, the other thing that you'd get is your chocobo would come with you um, and have like singed feathers, which I thought was really cool too. And then there was a gobu mount that only existed in 1.0 that you, could, you took with you also. And all legacy characters have a special tattoo. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a friend in the early game that had a character with a legacy mark. Yeah, there really aren't a lot of games out there that say they literally destroyed everything, rebuilt it from the ground up, and turned it into literally one of the most successful MMOs in existence. Yeah. They did a great job with this. Uh, there are some games that have as big of crash and burn and recoveries. Um, but what they did with Final Fantasy XIV is insane because it literally would have killed. 1.0 was so bad it would have killed Final Fantasy Online permanently. Yeah. Square lost a lot of money and face. Yeah. yeah. One thing I do like about 2.0 going forward is that you've seen influences of what 14 has done in other MMOs like WoW, Guild Wars too. you've seen things that they've done here the other the other big ones out there have gone like that's a good idea and when they were rebuilding in 2.0 they looked at a lot of other MMOs and pulled what worked oh, I got bad breath uh. Uh, this is why I hate this dungeon with a passion is because <laughs> Bad breath is have all of these status effects slapped on you at once. Sad part is I didn't even see him uh, casting it. Yeah. I wonder if it was this one I got hit by it. Uh, no, because if it was that one, it would have hit me. That's fair. He doesn't spawn in until we, uh, pretty much, we pretty much unleashed him from a cage, is what we seem to have accidentally done. Yeah. Um, so this dungeon, you're basically sent into this massive greenhouse terrarium type area because something's making the plants go crazy. Uh, uh, something's making the plants go crazy, and also there's talk of treasure. There's some big special treasure that yeah. all these treasure hunters want, and because of all the crazy plants, uh, they keep dying. And then you find out it's uh it's seeds. Seeds are yep. the treasure. Because they could survive the calamity, um, they can definitely grow in some other crazy spots. Right. Hopefully they're just they don't turn into evil puppetos that try to kill you. No no. Puppetos are growing from district grains. And of course we're up to what should be Illy's favorite part. As we break into a giant beehive. Yep. And unfortunately because they're mad at us, we have to uh, deal with the little bees and the big bees. And the big bees are... But they are... don't have final sting, so... Yeah. The big bees are terrifying, though. Oh, no. Yep. The clouds less so, but big ones... I'd never want to see one in real life. <laughs> Chris, can you just like stop? It's almost dead. It had like 0.6% health. Yeah. Can we 
get through it before the invincibility? Yes. But she does have an invincibility mechanic where you mm -hmm. have to go through and wipe the floor with all the drones. Sometimes we can manage to crit and just DPS past it, and other times, um, no. RNG is not very kind to us some days. Yeah. It's been kind of nice to us this evening so far. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Um, that being said... <laughs> there are some other enemies coming up here that are reused in Shadowbringers. Yes. <clears throat> the Rose Bears. Wherever they are. Um, through the barrier here. Yeah. I thought it was going to break through the barrier when I said that, and then, like, no. Oh, Grizzly Host. That's what they're called. They're called Rose Bears in Shadowbringers. Yeah. Basically, um, the Pixies in Shadowbringers are as close to the stories of True Fae as you're going to get. Yeah. They are, they, they're, they're pretty much True Fae. And they played... They pretty much made roses grow on these grizzly bears that were causing trouble for them and eating our livestock. And then they're like, and instead of chasing the bears away like we thought they'd deal with, it just made them even more angry. So could you, uh, could you help us with that? <laughs> it's literally how a, a quest line is. Yeah. A side quest. Do you have a moment for a quick donation? Sure. Yes. Okay, we have a $5 donation from Chocobo that just reads, Que. Hey. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> there is a player on our server named Questrel. It's uh, an Elizin, always dressed up like a Chocobo, and just runs laps around Ulda. Yeah. She never says anything. If you talk to her, all you get is Que. There's a couple of them back from my uh, days when I first started out playing this game on Coral that did similar stuff to that. Um, I think every server has one. Yeah. Did you have like table ornament or something? Um, no. Uh, tablecloth was on, I th think, Balmung. And when they came out with the Play Dead emote, which I can demonstrate real quick, um, just basically that laying on a table and their character's name was Tablecloth. Table Ornament. Thank you, Small. <laughs> um, the one I had was a Lollafell named Garden Gnome. I really haven't made any meme characters until recently. Um, some static members and I made uh, a cast of Fairly Odd Parents for alts. It's pretty fun. I have a Rogadin name uh, for Jorgen von Strangle. <laughs> actually, I forgot about this song. This is actually my, one of my favorites in the game. A Light in the Dark. And I think Normal is A Light in the Storm? I think it's the same song. Uh, no. Actually, it's... Oh, this part is A Light in the Storm, I think. I think oh, maybe. It starts out as... Look at that, moderating the Twitch chat while playing it, playing a speed run. Only because you're my emotional support, Samurai. <laughs> so if you're wondering why we can't, if we don't press on, we can't just yet. Uh, yeah, this is a forced. So, Ferocerus Normal is a Realm Reborn dungeon. You go from the bottom to the top to try and take care of the siren that is leading sailors astray. Um, the reason the ether in here are all these weird crystals and monsters are because a part of Dalamud, uh, when Bahamut was unleashed with on here, messed up the ether, the ambient magic in the world. And I got stuck on a pipe. Cool. Same. Now, the name of this enemy really uh, makes me wonder if there's some spoiler, spoiler, spoiler here <laughs> for later on with uh, the twinning. I don't 
know if that was intentional or coincidental. Fair. I, I genuinely don't know. Um, they could have been planning that all the way back here. I mean, very yes, very possible. And this one, um, whereas heard you were trying to go in and kill the uh, siren at the top to quit um, <clears throat> leading sailors astray, this one you're going into the bowels of the ca and the cave system under because the kobolds are trying to excavate everything out from under and collapse the lighthouse. A lot of us just run away, run away, run away. Yeah. All right, guys, come here. And now we finally finally had the uh forced wall. You got it? Okay. Well, I'm oh, I'm trying. Saw, I saw things on me. Okay. I guess I'll deal with them. I'll just stand here at the barrier, but... Now back in the, uh... Okay. AR dungeons, before they realized that that was a bad idea, uh, we used to take fall damage in dungeons for falling down pits like that. So in the overworld, you Sorry. actually can't die from fall damage unless you have something aggroed on you. I have been mid-jump off a super high cliff only to have something aggro on me at the last second and then I just splat. It's, yeah, it's very I've, I've unfortunate. I'm already mid-drop. <laughs> yeah, I'm mid-drop and you see the aggro line is just, oh no. Because otherwise you just drop to 1 HP. I have no donation if you have so a moment. This... Sure. Yeah. This room's kind of a nuisance, so it's going to take us a minute. Cool. I have a uh, 20 letter donation from SSPX. Simply reads Honk. <laughs> Peace was never an option. Not when the warrior alights and oh. Fair. Now, if you're wondering where all these bombs come from, you're about to see that. The literal mother of all bombs. And the father of all bombs. But yeah, for that room, we have to clear out everything, and then this door will clear over here. Besides, it's going to open up. Kind of a nuisance. So here's the mother Rogenitrix. of all bombs. Really, it's the gray ones we have to worry about. Yeah. And here's the father of all bombs, which apparently he's extra supercharged.
really leads to some interesting questions, which I will not bring up on stream, but I am picturing the um, David Attenborough narration of that. <clears throat> The, the Cobalt quests in general, even the Beast Tribe quests, probably raise a lot of questions about bombs that I... It's <laughs> fair. <laughs> ah, the Anti-Tower. Um, one of the two dungeons to use the, the Spriggans as an enemy. Um, and the Spriggans do love their reference. Well, the, the direct, the, the staff of Final Fantasy does love their references. Um, Koji Fox loves his Koji references. Fox definitely loves his references. Um, the first boss we fight is a giant frog who is singing bits and pieces of Rainbow Connection. Um, the second one is a Spriggan who is um, named Ziggy Stardust. Which is Ziggy and he has an attack called Stardust, I'm sorry. Um, this dungeon actually came out shortly after David Bowie passed away, so it was a very, very nice reference uh, nod. I'm not sure if that uh, Spriggan was going to be named that the whole time or not, but if it was, cool. If not, good on him. Um, it might have been because uh, the other Spriggan boss in the game at Copper Bell Hard is named Figgy. Yep. Who complains about that he is not small. Yeah. Um, there is other references, um, like for Sustasha Sustasha and Sustasha Hard, the quests are, it's probably pirates. And it's definitely pirates. Um, the, one, the unlock for the story mode of Titan is quaking up before you, Orgamoro. Being the area he's in, but you know, reference to a song, there's also, um, if it bleeds, we can kill it. There are lots of quest names and fate names and item names. There's, there's just a lot of puns and references in general in Final Fantasy XIV, and it's great. Um, yeah. One of the housing items, uh, the flavor text, is all these squares make a circle. <laughs> um, which is awesome. Uh, in A Realm yeah. Reborn, there is yeah, a there's also place that kind of access all that your... For you. Let me Google all that for you. Someone pointed out oh. in the chat. That is Google Hard. Yes. Pray to destroy the, the Waking Sands. That's the one that I was going to explain, yeah. actually. Sorry. Um, in A Realm Reborn, Waking Sands is kind of your base for most of it. And it doesn't have a teleport point until the huge rework that just happened. And even then, just little teleport points. So you had to teleport to a near Mish place and then walk the whole way. And players got really tired of constantly hearing, pray return to the waking sands. So we got a fate in Shadowbringers that was dubbed, pray destroy the waking sands. It wasn't destroyed, but uh, your home base, obviously, it was literal monsters of sand coming to life. But it was still hilarious. Yeah. They are, they are very self-aware in some of the, um, monsters and some of the just references um there's a couple of fates i can't think of their names here currently but they are very much references oh copy paste is one oh, of them yep it's one of them that's uh that's in western thanalan yeah i only know because i have been farming the daylights out of fates lately between from reborn relic weapons and yeah. just to finish the yokai weapons, it's a limited time event with yokai watch. That's actually going to be ending here in a couple weeks, so yeah. I've been trying to get that finished. And RNG Hild has not been kind to me. Hildebrand does not have a fourth wall. What are you guys talking about? Hildebrand is actually a remnant it's... from 1.0. Yes, he is. Um, because there was this, yeah, me too. There was I'm this time in. 
when they were retooling after Yoshida took over and they were kind of trying to set up for a Realm Reborn and had out content for players because they they actually ended the subscription. People who had bought the game um, and had a subscription up to a certain point could just keep playing for free because the game as kind of an apology because the game was such yeah. a dumpster fire. If you had um, um, played at 1.25, you would have basically gotten the last bit of 1.0 for free. Is what the cutoff was. Okay. It's weird that I and... remember that. I never played it. <laughs> Basically, the writers were given free reign to do whatever insanity they wanted in Hildebrand. Uh, Wait, that wasn't that bad. Of that. Hmm? Oh, fair to, to swear. I have the moderator panel open. I was like, no, that wasn't okay. Oh, something in chat. Yeah. I was gonna say, I'm like, did I say something? Because I'm very prone to doing that. No, no, you, you were good. Um, now we're about to come up to the creepiest boss in the game. Yeah, if you don't like creepy dolls, uh, you may not want to yeah, watch this boss. You may want to come back in a little bit when you hear the victory fanfare. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of hate this. So, that attack you just saw, um, Starfall, that the wind up. Agnes is using is Limit Break 2 for casters, and these little puppets are just casually dropping Limit Break 2. And as a caster main, that really hurt. Yeah. All right, Kalka and Brina, the creepy puppet dolls that I am so glad we can skip so many of the mechanics of. Yes. Uh, can I catch both of you guys in foul? No, you move. Oh no, I did catch her! She just had to finish her animation. So it has this music, and then it switches to Omnis Prognostics for some reason. Don't get me wrong, it's a really awesome boss theme. I mean. I just felt like it'd probably be more fitting if they kept the weird don't look at me. Yeah. Uh, why it said that is there's a mechanic it puts that eye icon on me um, and if he had been facing me when it went off he would have been confused and then confusion means he's just gonna walk right up and start smacking me as he's a samurai and I'm a squishy black mage that actually really hurts <laughs> <laughs> even though it's the auto attacks that really hurts uh, the estimates actually fairly close to accurate um... Lost City of Amdapur Hard is another um, referential to previous games of the series. That's something they love doing in here. Like, the Eden Raid tier in current content is based off of Final Fantasy VIII. Um, Crystal Tower is from Final Fantasy III. Um, Gilgamesh, of course, been in all of them, but started out in Final Fantasy V. Um, the Anti Tower. You know or not Anti Tower, the Lost City Amdapur, while references a lot of the lore of the game itself, pulls out some sprite assets for enemies from Final Fantasy XI. And then some of the bosses, or at least the final boss, no, two of the bosses in here pop up later in Shadowbringers, or their models are reused, to the point where uh, there's a lot of speculation if there's some kind of connection. So I know the last boss, which one is the other one? The hell is that lion from the other dungeon? Uh, it's the lion. The lion's in here. Is he in here too? Okay. Yeah. Different lion, yeah. The other one's shown up too, I think. Oh, hey, more goblin or gremlins. More gremlins. I don't, know why, I don't know why I keep wanting to say goblin lately. Um, <laughs> can someone that's in the tech advance the, um... Thing. It's still saying we're doing uh, all trials. I just noticed that.
All right, come here, guys. Uh, I've been hit with misery. Oh well, it loves company. This boss is kind of interesting. It basically makes clones of the other players to attack you with. Now they don't really mimic your attacks, thankfully. Um, they just throw really big AOEs out at you instead. I'm doing good. Uh, uh there's a area. Yeah. So Amdapur is really interesting. It is a group of people called the Amdapuri. Uh, Amdapur sit lost city of Amdapur hard and Port Keep also. It's part of this. They were all white mages, pretty much. They excelled in white magic and their enemies were the black mages from Vak. Uh, or the, yeah, the Vaki black mages. And they were constantly warring with each other to the point where they flooded the entire world uh, in what was called the Fourth Umbral Calamity. And white and black magic were completely forbidden for like 600 years. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much until our game picks up, there really isn't any white or black mages. There's, there are no black mages, period. Uh, and there are white mages on very, very, very special circumstances. Ever active at a time. They don't leave Perdania anyway, so they entirely count. Yeah. And this area here is kind of a remnant of the Magi Wars, which is why you have all these voidal enemies from that the Black Mages would have summoned. And then there's lots of light and stone and stuff that uh, would have been meant to end them all. Seeing here. Yeah, and then, um... Yeah, here's the lion. Yeah, okay, yeah. I was getting the lions mixed up. I mean, then in the Voidraga-looking enemies on the side, you see, definitely see those, too. Mm-hmm. You see them in, uh, Amdapur keep them and the... All Demon, that's mm -hmm. called? Demon Wall, yeah. A demon wall. Uh, they're not voidal. They're actually just stone creations made by the white mages of Amdapur. They're not actually uh, from the void. Which is, or, I just thought that was interesting. As a Final Fantasy call, as 14 calls them void scent. Void scent, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting lore on the void itself, but that is Spoiler City for Shadowbringer, so I'm not oh, going yeah. to. That that caster DPS quest, though. <laughs> yeah. Or roll quest. Oh, yeah. We gotta, we gotta kill these. Yeah. Sorry, Janet was acting. So, I don't know if those enemies were, um, and I know small in chat and can correct me on this or not, but these mana idols are enemies from Final Fantasy XI. I don't remember if the I'm play I'm assuming their models were. have been updated? Not that much. <laughs> I'm sure play, the polygon count was probably cleaned up a bit. That, I think, is about all that's happened, is they cleaned up the poly count. Um... The clay effigies were? Okay, cool. So. so that Banish 3 spell that light sprites are using um, also pop up in E8 Savage? It hurts. And it's small, it's small to point out the light sprites also. 
Uh, but these mana pots are from 11. Um, and then later on, when you get to the um, Barton's Metal, the creatures that run around on three wheels, I thought they're called Barton's Metal, but in uh, 11, they're called Cardigans. Then there's Karibu. Which... Uh, hey, look, we killed it. We're done. Sleep. Never mind. By grace of the Magi, I shall rise again! And then one more time. Okay. Third time's the charm. Yeah. And there's actually an inscription on the statue too. Oh, Basically yeah, explaining what how it was made. <sighs> grumpy old lady of a dog has decided to be a grumpy old lady. Ah. Uh, Sorkai. Another fun one. Uh, one of the last story dungeons yep. in Heaven's Word. The whole point is, uh, Good Guy Dragon is putting you through a trial to see whether or not he will you're worthy of it. No, the UI normally isn't this crowded. Um, but I would like to just take a quick second to say hello to all the raiders that are jumping in from Glitch Cat stream. Ooh, raids. Yep. No, I have a very crowded UI. It just works for how I like playing the game. I'm weird. The UI in this game is very, very customizable, and I really like that. Um, you're not going to see two players with the same exact layout. Yeah. Well, when you're doing this first hallway, if you got any more donations, that's fine. Okay. Uh, no, we don't have any donations, but I would like to go ahead and make sure that we do have the donation link in the chat. So there we go, guys. We do want to have the donations coming in. Keep them coming. By the way, not donation. Thank you, guys. That was on me. I am very That's tired. <laughs> Looks like uh, someone got you covered. I did kill that other fan really early, so I st stopped to pick up the buff from it. Which is a haste buff. Instead of being slowed by something, it's being made faster for once. Which is great on Black Mage, because gotta go faster. Yep. My build is literally trying to squeeze out as much spell speed as possible. And here's another Moogle. Oh. Thinks they know better than the... <laughs> the normal people and wants to steal our thunder basically if I remember correctly he's just we... I genuinely don't remember other than you have to do so many menial errands for them and want to punch a moogle by the end of their ball bit in the story mm -hmm. that's why I use moogle weapons it's cathartic Especially if you're uh, play going through the Dark Knight questline, uh, Dark Knight Mentor has a huge uh, hatred for Moogles. Um, it's kind of hilarious, and I don't really blame him because they're they're little trolly fuzzbutts during that quest. Um, we literally have a like Disney-esque musical number in the Dark Knight questline with them, and it's great. <laughs> I 
these uh, birds can uh, cast an ability called Petrifaction, um, which, as it sounds, paralyzes you. Or turns you to stone, petrifies you. And here's more... Yeah, it's just a random griffin. Yeah. I never realized he's green. He's got, like, hummingbird colors. Yeah. But that's, com that's common also with 14. You'll see him use one... Um... It'll be a boss in one dungeon, and then in another dungeon, it'll just, it'll just be a normal mob. Normal enemy that you have to fight. Um, they did that in Stormblood a couple times with the uh, Garleans. Their um, edge attack. Mm -hmm. And the boss that everyone wants is a mount and still hasn't been made into a mount. There are a couple, there's like one Pegasus mount that's kind of similar, but you can't get it anymore, I don't think. Which one was it? I don't think I have it. I think it's called like Night Pegasus or something. Mm. You can buy it on the market board. If you have 20 million gil to spare. Didn't know I don't. Yeah. Ah, good old Horace Vilgar. Dragon whose name I can never spell correctly. Yeah, neither can I. Oh, that's right, yeah, we want to be over here. I wonder if you can fall off that, but you can. I don't know, you go find out. You have to walk a shame it. No, I would just wait till the barrier came up for the boss. Oh uh, yeah. Someone pointed out there's a uh, white Pegasus mount. Uh, 4200 Sky Builder scripts. You used to get it in the original Diadem. Hmm. Prettiest boss theme, I think, in the game. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're not on the platform when it vanishes. <laughs> I did that one time. I've done it once too. Now let's see if I go, which, was it on you? He was on you, wasn't he? Oh. I don't know. Oh yeah, I do have his aggro. I actually don't think I had that card. Oh, did you get a triple triad card? Yeah. So this game's got like a whole area dedicated to mini games. The Gold Saucer from Final Fantasy VII returns as the Manderville Gold Saucer. The only thing it doesn't have is the snowboarding mini game. I really wish they'd bring that in because that'd be fun. That'd be great for um, Starlight. Yeah. Is that the name of the Christmas event? Starlight Celebration, yeah. Yeah, I think. Ah, uh, yes. Holebreaker Isle, a dungeon where you have to go f clear it out, and then it gets turned to... And the baseball minigame, yeah, that's not in here either. I forgot about the baseball one. Um, dungeon that you have to go clear everything out of, and then is later on turned into a training ground for one of the grand companies. The other one this is done with is uh, Holly Tolly. It's used by the Immortal Flames, just the Gladiator's Guild. I won't. I don't remember the story for it, to be honest. Yeah. I think one of the last people you fight is a, a member of the Flames, but only just because he's a member. Um.
There is also the, um... Yeah. Many games you got in here got, like, Chocobo Racing. You've got, um, Triple Triad from 8. There's uh, Lord of Vermilion. Yeah, which um, is... Which is... A weird game. I've tried playing it a couple times and just... It's like a MOBA. Yeah. Um... But you fight with the minions you collect in game, the little that follow, pet type things that follow you around for fun. Um, I've only tried it once, and of course, the TV I played it on, I was sitting so far away from, I couldn't see anything. So I just got really frustrated with it. Usual skill, take a small. On the fort, you're cleaning out, and then the flames you take it over, okay. The small in the chat there is a. Um, pretty good lore buff on this game. And then there's also, yeah, literal ma Mahjong. Yeah, Domin Mahjong is the newest edition. And one of the events then, called The Slice is Right. Yep. And then there's a couple of mini games that are in the um, in rooms that are basically like um, a, a little slide scrolling 8-bit game and then a, um, a slider puzzle I blanked on that for a second uh, then there's there's some other ones that uh, come over from like holiday events if you complete them yeah like well, that's uh, the, reassembling the, the, the um is there a mini game that's uh, like reading a donation there can be go ahead because I have a $10 donation from SSPX that says you should donate to Task Giving. You can donate as little as $1 to the National Alliance for Mental Illness and help support a great organization. Happy Task Giving, everyone. <laughs> I will uh, say on a non-game related note, I work for a nonprofit that deals in the mental health field and we work very closely with NAMI. They are a great organization. Uh, hello, Carl. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons I was really excited to join in as a runner, um, as a way to give back to Nami, even though I, I do do a lot of work with them. But it's still a fun way to do it instead of doing it as, you know, like your actual job. Fair. Like what? Ah, uh, yes, the monkeys. Or gorillas, as they call them in here. Sasquatch. Alright. really big AoE that I have to wait like a minute to charge up mm -hmm. called Foul. And the way it works is it has a really high damage potency for the first guy it hits and for every other enemy it drops off to percent And it actually used to be a lot worse until Shadowbringers came out because the first enemy would hit with the full potency and then 25% reduction for the next enemy. Picked them at random basically for who all the way down to like a 75% damage. Um, I used to do that for Flare too, which is a really weak attack to begin with. So that damage reduction made it like useless. I remember when Flare was, was a weak attack. Yeah, they like hype it up as the level 50. It's your ultimate spell. It uses all of your mana and it sucks. But I mean, it's happened to both casters, or both DPS casters, you know, the summoner got one that got hyped up, and it's just like, no. Oh, uh, Death Flare? Yeah, the replaceable. It was really nice. A replaceable attack, but it was underwhelming. Oh, I moved. Ah. Yeah, Thin Ice. Uh, it's kind of misstep, and you just go sliding everywhere. 
great. It's not. No. Some later trials in the game you. And then drop an AoE that you have to. Uh, that you have to run out of. So, um, in this area, you'll notice some commentary on, to me anyway, at least, um, uh, from the next uh, enemy that we fight, uh, which, which is uh, Makote, that's one of the members of the Maelstorm. I like characters also a member of the Maelstorm, so they, you, <laughs> basically I told, I've been looking forward to this fight, Lieutenant Elswind. <laughs> And that little extra bit um, isn't told to Kage's character because not a Maelstrom character, but they love doing that. They love actually acknowledging your class in the game. Like, um, there's a point in the Heaven's Ward story where one of the characters makes a comment about, behold, you know, they'd be wrong to trifle with the power of two Azure Dragoons. Yeah, if you've gone through the Dragoon quest line. Uh, there are lots of quest odds and stuff that'll change on cutscenes, and it's great. Thankfully, you can see them both with and without uh, quest progress if you go back and rewatch them in the end. Yeah. So if you want to see the differences between the cutscenes, it's free. Oh, look, we got a hype train going. Hype train! That's better than the field strip. I get enough of those playing Final Fantasy normal. Yeah, fair. Why'd you bother, dude? <laughs> Could have auto, <laughs> auto attacked on you and you would have been. It's okay. Uh, Merle Web's just going to come up and tease him. Yep. She does. She's walking up there. She just gives him so much crap as he kick his butt. It's great. Yeah. Talking about minions here, the uh, Pasa Patissier is a uh, minion of mine. It's actually really adorable. I've got my anima one out. Yeah. Yeah, and the anima is another adorable one. Zulfatal. Or the birds that couldn't fly, so they invented it, hot air balloons. Well, they could fly, and then they invaded... Um, <laughs> they could fly, then they pissed off their deity, and they she took away the ability to fly. Actually, it was the they... elementals in Gridania. They oh, invaded right. Gridania, and the elementals um, used to be, like, stupid powerful and cursed the entire race and couldn't fly anymore. Um, and then the Calamity happened, and... Devs went, yeah, we're gonna nerf these guys now. Yeah. They kind of nerfed the whole elemental wheel that does play a heavy part into 11, where, like, or into any Final Fantasy where you'll have, like, enemies that are weak to fire, and if you use, like, ice and water, it hurts them more. They kind of got rid of that. Um, one of the ones I normally use is either the Gaily Kitten or the uh, Owlet. Or sometimes I'll, I'll have a uh, Wind Up Dalamood. I'll put that one out too if I want a uh, murderous karaoke ball following me around. Ooh, there's a good uh, question for you. Favorite minion? Ooh. Um, I really like the Anima because that to get it, you have to complete the entire um, Heaven's Word Relic Weapon bus line. Mm hmm. Um, but I also really like my wind up mistle. Wind up Grahatia. Yeah. Wind up mistle might be one of my favorites. But he okay. is spoiler city, so I oh, don't yeah. know. Um my favorite have to be the Gale Kitten. Just because of the description. <laughs> oh the descriptions on the minions are great. Yeah. Although Fat Chocobo is pretty adorable too, like the Chocobo chick. Oh yeah. 
I think one of my favorite minions, just flavor text wise, is the wind up uh, Ice Heart, wind up Shiva. Mm. Uh, because they go through all of this. The follower Shiva's worshippers go through all this trouble to get a wind up Shiva made. And then it comes out so adorable, they're not sure if they should worship it or cuddle it. <laughs> yes. Fat Cat, Lesser Panda, and the Broader Otter. There's another word play that they like. You see, I would say the Fat Cat, but I don't have it, and I'm not shelling out the three and a half million gil on the market board for it. <laughs> I don't know how I got it. Uh, I don't know. The only way you can get it normally is if you have a fishing retainer level 40 or above and you send it on a field exploration. That is literally the only way you get that I minion. I probably got it from off of Leviathan when it, before moving over and it's cheaper. Oh, oh maybe. <laughs> yeah, the um, game does have kind of an in-game economy with the market boards. Oh yeah. Um, the fact that now we can freely travel between servers on our data center uh, makes price like searching a lot easier. Because like, usually if I want something that's normally really expensive, I hop on over to Brynhildr and nine times out of ten it's cheaper on Brynhildr. Um, well, friends that play on Brynhildr lament this fact because they can't sell stuff without getting undercut. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah, the the true end game, of course, is um, glamorous though. Oh yeah. I got the key. Okay. Oh, the lever cronk. Unfortunately, there isn't a wrong lever to pick from. No. I'm guessing uh, Ray plays the Glamour in game very heavily. Look, 400 in the Glamour dresser isn't nearly enough still. I'm sorry that the bot got you on that one. That was an adorable comment there. Sorry, Dragon Lord. He's pasted in the description for the Peridot uh, Carbuncle. And the bot in Automod got him? Yeah, Automod got him. Oh, huh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. The Carbuncle mounts are awesome, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, favorite mount. Fat Boogle. <laughs> <laughs> Because its wings are so small and there's no way it should be able to lift its giant body. I think the description actually is a B-movie reference, too. Probably? I don't actually have that mount, so I can't tell you off the top of my head. Yeah. What's your favorite? Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess the car. I do like the regalia a lot. Um, I also really like the fat cat mount mm. and the id hog lantern. I don't think I, I haven't done any of those. So I don't have the. It's lantern. a really dark purple one that matches just because it matches a lot of the glamours and stuff and the general feet of black mages. You already have the airstone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the next one that has two airships here. Yep. Mm -hmm. I really hope... Uh, didn't they make the pod minion? Or a mount from the near Automata stuff? Or is oh. it just a minion? 
just a minion right now. I hope they make him out of out of pod. I mean, it's, it's that would about, be pretty great. Yeah, it's it's like the the, the death clock carrying you around. <laughs> you guys just quit shooting from afar. Thank you. No, did you get it? No. Okay, I thought you were there. I apologize. I <laughs> you'd ran off. <laughs> I can attack from really far away. Yeah, fair. <laughs> the behemoth flies through pure rage. Yes, exactly. One of the best flight animations is the Edamantois <laughs> uh, mount. It is a mount you do, I do not recommend going into first person view on. No. Because it retracts its arms and legs, and, you know, arms, arms legs, legs head, head and just spin. to the shell. Yeah, and pretty much rocket power uh, turns into a rocket powered Beyblade. Just spins through the air. And if you go to first person mode, your, your camera spins too. Mm -hmm. Another another one of those, like, how does this fly kind of mouse I like is the Namazu one. Oh, yeah, the Pelican. Yeah. The Bomb Pelican is another cool one too. It's so on par for the, um... And you got the fat chocobo. Yep. Who you compelled to fly by dangling cake in front of its face. Uh-huh. And I have the, uh... The fat chocobo also. Or the original fat chocobo, which is a white version of the, uh... Fat chocobo. Yeah, I have the giant... I have the, uh, topaz one or citrine whatever it is the yellow one uh carbuncle yeah the car yellow carbuncle mount i have the aquamarine Guide. carbuncle mount um yeah i have the fat cat <laughs> which is adorable and i don't remember how i got it But then good old Tonberries. I'm, I'm glad that that's one of the reoccurring enemies of the game. As I said earlier with Rick Gooball, as you noticed, the piano is a lot darker, a lot more foreboding this time. At least in the beginning. Yeah, and then it goes back to chill. Yeah. Actually, going back to that earlier comment about favorite out of dungeon music, Idleshire and then the Stormblood Kugane uh, town theme. Oh, um... I can't remember the name of the, act the actual name of the song. New Cry. Which is very upbeat, very... very into the theme of the areas. Kill like overkill. Overkill is best kill. demon book yeah remember that demon book we fought earlier yeah, he's not in his book anymore
This is very much a dungeon. You kind of have to look at your map on so you go the right direction. Uh huh. We have both gone down the wrong side of the hallway before. Like I almost just did again. <laughs> um, that really squeaky sounding enemy um, kind of doesn't do much now. Um, as the only damage you could do back in the day was to your TP pool or tactical points. And when they updated the game to 5.0, they got rid of TP. Entirely. And I'm so glad they did. I uh, same, because the skills cost more, but they never really um, gave you more of the pool to go with it. Yeah, the, the pool never increased. Sprinting used up TP. Um, all of your AOE and some of your ranged attacks as a tank cost TP, which meant doing pulls was a really big pain on the butt. And then you had enemies that drain TP and you really didn't have any way to restore it. Yeah. Other there than, was like, a bard skill and a um, machinist skill that would restore it, but that was about it. Yeah, and the, uh, an astrologian card. Mm -hmm. One single And then there was a drag card. Actually, there was a dragoon skill that would just net dump you um, like 700 TP. Um, I forgot the name of it. And then as someone found out, pointed out in the game, you used to be able to assign your skill points. Can't anymore. That must have been way before I started playing. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, back when that was a thing, because I would switch between, I used to uh, main summoner, but I'd have to switch to scholar occasionally. I had like a s full stack of keepers hymns, which would let you change your stat points. Invigorate, thank you, small. That was the one that just gave you like 500 at the first time, then you got the upgrade version and it was 700. That book over there, Proceedings of the Council of Magi, um, is actually the in lore reason for why spell names in this game go by like Fire 1, Fire 2, 3, 4, instead of Fire, Fyra, Fyraga, and Fyraja. Um, it's because they made a new team. They had discovered a new spell, quote unquote, that would have been above the Yaja level spell. And they're like, well, what are we going to call it? What do we do when we keep discovering more spells as time goes on? And they're finally just, uh, the Council of Magi essentially decided, screw it, we're going to go one, two, three, four, because uh, it's, it's going to make our lives easier as we discover new spells, aka when uh, new expansions come out and they add more spells that are like upgrades of cure and fire and your basic Final Fantasy spells. Uh, it's a lot easier on the devs than making up a new uh, suffix mm. tier. Thankfully, other than with Black Major, they've not really gotten past three or four. Uh, Black Mage is still on four. Oh, it's still on four. Fire okay. four is still its explosion. Yeah. Really. I think uh, um, Summoner is still bio three and ruin three. I think the highest we've got so far. Um, no, there is a ruin four. There's ruin four. Yeah, it's, that's right. It's the one that's tied to the criti critical chance. Oh yes, uh, cleric no, stance. Not... Yes, cleric stance was amazing. Unless you forgot to drop it when you needed to heal in an emergency. And then it kind of sucked. Yeah. And we're fighting a s owl mounted to a chair. So, uh, lucid dreaming used to be a very different ability, too. Oh, yeah. Lucid dreaming, um, have your aggro as a mage. And as a black mage, uh, before the tank overhaul in 5.0, I could rip, you do so much damage as a black mage, you, it's super easy to just rip hate mm -hmm. off of the tanks. I would constantly um, accidentally pull aggro off of my friends. And then it's panicked black mage noises as I get obliterated. Yeah. Uh, I want to say that um, machinists could do it also for a while. Probably. Machinist used to be such an RNG fest. 
um, pull yeah. off. And it's a lot better now. But Dancer takes the place as RNG, the RNG fest, mm -hmm. because you have your normal skills, which can then proc different skills, which then have a chance of proccing a feather, and then using the feather has a chance of proccing a different skill. And it's no. Dancer is a ton of fun, but RNG really has to be on your side if you're doing end game content, like the Savage Tier yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're coming into the last dungeon here, so. There is one more after this. Uh, they also, there's one after the. Oh, I'm getting tired. It's okay. It's it is like one of the optional. Or I could be wrong. I mean, it, it's three in the morning, too. I think Bailstar's Wall is the last one. Yeah, we'll try not to get sloppy. Yeah, there aren't any sloppies in shadows. Sloppy. Uh, someone definitely dropped one in chat. Uh, please, Foul, can you, like, charge so I can wipe this whole pack of you? Right. Thank you. I'm back here and beat up on this guy here. She came in on somewhere. Oh well. I mean, I see someone complaining about Astrologian in the early days of being the same card six in a row. That's because That's this game no doesn't, under doesn't understand percentages. Or anything of the sort. Going back to the uh, the thundercloud procs or the um, wind bite or heavier shot, it's just like, yeah, I can get this. So this procs ninety percent of the time. I see it five percent of the time. Yep. I love when I'm doing gathering, and you have a ninety-eight percent chance to harvest this item. Uh didn't yield item, or you found nothing, you found nothing, you found nothing, you found nothing. This uh, node is empty. What? Yeah. <laughs> 2% failure rate, and I somehow fail all five attempts. That's really impressive, and it happens multiple times. I got kind of mad at playing botanist. Yeah. There's a reason why I haven't leveled minor. So I will say, um, if you're enjoying watching the game, uh, it does have a free trial. And <laughs> recently they completely reworked the trial. Originally it was just up to level 35, about half-ish way through 2.0 story. Now it's all the way up to level 60 and you go all the way through Heaven's Word. So all the content we've been running you can do that on the free trial. Yep. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. I'll have these guys in a second. Let's see, charge up. So they all get off the stupid conveyor belt. Hey, I got them all this time. Yeah, I noticed. Sometimes RNG doesn't like me and that big damage drop off. Yeah. Oh, fails. I guess we needed a hand. I mean, we're not going through Praetorium, so someone has to make the Nero level puns. No, no, we'd be fine without the Nero level shenanigans. Yeah, I missed him. That's depressing. He was out of range. Really, I don't expect you to remember, but okay. What is Illy promising to do? Kick me from voice chat later. I don't know. Illy can have good memory when it comes to trolling. Yeah, fair. Uh, 
all of them. Yeah, I didn't to hand that would be your HP pool, so. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Come on, guys. And the center. So this dungeon, while well, it was the last dungeon of the patch before cycle before Stormblood came out. Um, was also the payoff of some of the ARR storyline. Mm -hmm. Some of the Brave New Era stuff from ARR. And then Shadowbringers is some payoffs for stuff in the very beginning of ARR. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Extreme caution thing that is still stuck on us for some reason. Um, you can't move. You can't move, you can't attack, you can't cast, you can't do anything, otherwise you blow up. Yeah. I guess the gunship won't be dropping the key today. Doesn't look like it. All of the guys ran out of range of foul as soon as it went off. They may have been locked on to me, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know who they locked on. Either way, they still moved. But yes, joke's on him. He can't rename me in my Discord. I rank him. I'm server owner. Um, so while we're going through this last little bit here, where the, can they find you on the internet? Um, Twitter or something. You could find me at Kage on Twitch. Um, I don't tweet very much. Uh, if you follow me, you will be flooded with Final Fantasy content, and I apologize for nothing. <laughs> So if you want to see a whole bunch of Final Fantasy 15 stuff, um, there otherwise, I don't much of an online presence. I don't stream much anymore because of internet issues. Okay. You can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash media magnet or on Twitter at media magnet game because media magnet is a company that I wasn't aware existed. It's okay. Some, someone has the name Kageyuki and it was an inactive Twitter, but I couldn't get the handle. Mm, so I'm um, Kage on Twitch. Alrighty. Then we'll see what plays for you at the far edge of fate. That was yeah. actually the name of the patch. Yep. Uh that this came out on. Yeah, they like putting the movie title in the in the movie. Whoop. Way. Sloppy. Is he not gonna say it? There he goes. <laughs> I'll tear you limb from limb. And I'm sure you want to see if the minion -min drops, which it doesn't. It none. And thank you, I already got loot bomb today, though. Uh, and I believe that was time. Um, I think that was the last dungeon, but as it's about three a two and three a.m., I'm not sure. Confirm real quick. Yeah, to load. Uh, nope, some all hard. Optional dungeon. Right, right. And I, I swear, this music is from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. It has a, uh, at least part of the motif is from Seven. Part of it's from Eight too. I want to say. It could be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also on GitHub as Media Magnet. I'm, uh, if you've been around Duengo stream, you've seen Hugh Fighter. I wrote that, and that's on my GitLab, actually, but still under Media Magnet. 
I mean, yeah, I have an archive of our own account if you want to read write it or, you know, <laughs> writing work. But other than that, yeah, but you can't really find me much anywhere. Unless it's on uh, Discord or uh, here on Final Fantasy on Mateus. You're both on the Mateus server. Um, the Crystal Data Center. Our names are not obscured if you want to find us on game and join fun playing this game with us you're more than welcome to just send us a message i don't know what i was trying to do there <laughs> it's it's you know. uh no i did not illy i'm um, sorry Bears. And because this is the final dungeon in Heaven's Word, a lot of the enemies have really high health pulls. Um, so it's it's hard even though we're 20 levels above them. And like 250 plus I lo item level over what the dungeon's minimum is. Uh, we can't one-shot them. No. I mean, that's kind of been an issue for a while, but it's it's really apparent here in this final dungeon. Cause there are some big packs and stuff that we have to that we can pull. So instead, you get to see like the full black mage rotations and stuff. <laughs> I actually get a full gauge before doing things for in here too. I think it's the only dungeon I actually get the full ga kinky gauge. Did not and key for the rest. That's what I said, but you know, Discord being Discord um, and other audio being other audio. I mean, I mean, yeah. Don't you start that. I'm not trying to. So, I, since I started playing uh, this game back when... Or it's halfway through the Stormblood patch cycle, actually. Um, I'm not super familiar with, like, the story behind these optional dungeons in Heavensward. I do know uh, this one is one of the requirements for the Heavensward Relic Weapon. Which is why I unlocked it in the first place. Same with like Gubal Hard. Yeah. You have to get items from it to forge your new weapon. This one I don't remember the story to either. Um I think there's just monsters here in some all or that are causing trouble, and because this is the dragon's graveyard essentially, or like a sacred area to the dragons, they want you to clear it out for them. Yeah. Because you fit in these tunnels. They don't. So Illy's wondering what your next relic's gonna be. Um, like completed? Yeah. It's the next one you're gonna take to completion, or are you done with them? Um, I have told myself that I am not taking any more relic weapons through the light farming phase until I make that program for tracking how much light you make so I don't have to sit there with the calculator and then take it out every time. Um, also, it was kind of like I need to sit down and actually stuff. Fair. Fair. Otherwise, depending on how long that takes, my next weapon to completion might end up being the Black Mage 5.0 Relic. Uh, Soul Scourge which I have up to the recollection phase. I'm actually using it right now. Let's just glamour to look like the Realm Reborn completed relic weapon. Yeah, I'm using the um, Samurai Relic from the current one, the unpowered version of it, because I haven't been logging in because I just... Factory has a black hole of time and I've been playing that a lot. 
Um, yeah, it's kind of stolen you. Yeah. Space exploration is so fun. Otherwise, I don't know. Um, I might work on Excalibur Zeta. I have been working on the Dark Knight relic for Heaven's Word. Uh, I've been working on the Dragoon relic for Heaven's Word. I am on the sand phase for that one, actually. Nice. I need to get around to finishing up Bravura. I'm still in the book phase of that one. So, I've seen Bravura finished for the first time. The uh, Ragnarok Zeta is really cool looking. Oh, yeah. That is on my list. That's the uh, Warrior's Axe, by the way, for people in chat. Yes. I missed one. It's coming eventually. They just have a really, really big AoE and they're kind of a nuisance, so. Yeah. Your light just can completely shrug off that big lava shower that just dumped on their heads. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're the um, marked of the planet's spirit, I think you can shrug off most things. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Lava Scorpion card. Neat. And that is time. Time. So, uh, thank you all for watching us run through these uh, two different runs of Final Fantasy. It was great to show them off, great to discuss the lore and all that fun stuff about the game. <laughs> Thank you.